with the Kawasaki Ultra 310 LXS. And today I'm looking again at the Kawasaki OEM cargo rack. And today I wanna to show you how we're gonna put two generation two made in USA Rotopax containers on either side of our Kawasaki OEM rack. So we've got our Rotopax Deluxe Pax mounts. We've got two of those. And of course we've got these two Rotopax generation two, two gallon containers made in the USA. So these two Rotopax are gonna allow us to carry a 40 quart cooler and four gallons of auxiliary fuel or three 15 gallon jugs with the addition of another four gallons. All right, so these little bracket pieces here were included with the Kawasaki rack. You can see that this plastic here is molded so that those will fit right in there, just like that. And then we're gonna use some of the hardware included with our Rotopax to get these installed. The thing I love about the Rotopax products is they are all made in the USA. That's a rarity these days. You know, nothing against other countries, um, but it is really nice to have quality products made right here at home. So the Gen 1 containers actually have like a puzzle piece on the bottom so they could fit together in a flat fashion if you have them on your hood or on the rear of a vehicle. So these Gen 2 containers have more handles, which I prefer for a jet ski application because you're often tilting these in weird directions in order to maneuver them to fill your ski. All right, let's get these open and see what hardware is included and what hardware we might need to buy. All right, so I put this one in place just so you can see. So I've sourced these M6 316 stainless steel bolts, and then I've also sourced some 316 stainless washers. You can use whatever style you want. So the ones that came with the rotor packs are these carriage bolts. So those are nice. You could put those through. You could see that the molding in the base plate is conducive to a carriage bolt. So if you put the carriage bolts, of course the ones that come with the rotor packs are a bit short, but you could just use, you know, your standard hardware. You don't have to use these, this uh, custom hardware that came with the rack. However, I do like using these stainless Allens. They're a little easier to get off. Now these Rotopacks can actually go two ways. So you can have them like this, or you can have them like this. So I'm gonna mount mine like this for now, but I'll show you how to mount it the other way. It's really just about the way that you orient this bracket. So these, the kit includes some half inch bolts. You're gonna go ahead and apply some blue thread locker to those bolts. And then you're gonna use one of these washers here and we're gonna go ahead and tighten those in. So we've used thread locker and our half inch socket to tighten this Rotopax assembly to the bracket, to the sub bracket. And now this is gonna go in place right like that. Again, if you want your jugs to be stored this way on the rack, then you need to ensure that your mount is like this. If you want them to be installed upright this way, then pay attention and make sure that you're installing your mount like this. I think I'm gonna try this way for now. And again, these are M6 316 stainless Allens that I sourced locally. They do have washers. The washers that I purchased are actually a little bit bigger than I would have liked. Um, but the hardware store didn't have any smaller washers in 316 stainless. They were out, so these ones will work. You can really customize that hardware however you want. It's not included with the Rotopax bracket or with the Kawasaki rack. So, the, again, the only thing that is included are these base mounting assemblies. And then you have to source your own M6 bolts. With these. So there's also an extension kit for this if you wanted to carry thicker fuel jugs. You know, the Rotopax has a lot of neat solutions. There's a storage container that looks like a Rotopax jug that could go on there. All right, so now we're gonna take our jug. I'm gonna put it on like that. Then we're gonna tighten this. There you go. So that's a look at the horizontally mounted jug. I don't know if I like it or not. All right, let's try to put the jug vertical and see what that looks like. All right, so I flipped this mount around here and now it's positioned for us to mount this in the vertical position. This is the Rotopax Deluxe Pax mount. There's a couple different ones. This one I think is the most secure for these fuel jugs. 
and you know you lock those dimples in there you go so that's your vertical mounting style and it is a little bit closer to the rack itself so i think i'm going to leave them like this for now that seems to be how they show them mounted in all the literature for this rack all right so let's do the other side and then we'll put the cooler in and take a look at our new setup okay so we've got our rotopax containers all mounted in place we've got our rotopax deluxe pax mounts in place and tightened down and i wanted to give you a look here at the spout on these containers so the neat thing about these and is they do have a valve so you could invert the container up to your fill and then you'll be able to open this valve the other cool thing is these also have a strainer inside so that'll hopefully catch any debris any any larger debris that uh, might get in there from filling your tanks but these are the gen 2 2 gallon 7.5 liter roto packs they just came out with the gen 2 not that long ago the difference between the gen 1 and the gen 2 is that these have additional handles whereas the gen 1 have like a puzzle piece bottom to fit together these I think are better for a jet ski application because there's more handles to grab onto when you're holding the container to pour it. And I did show you, you could put these horizontal or vertical, depending how you attach these Rotopax PAX mounts to the rack. I don't see this often. I'm out on the water all the time and very few people actually have a cargo net like this over their coolers. I know if you own an Ultra 310, you're out there in the ocean bashing around and the netting like this that comes with the rack really helps keep your cargo in place. I mean, that cooler's not going anywhere. Your fuel tank's a dry box, not gonna move with this webbing on top. So this will add four gallons of gas to the ski, which is great in the event of an emergency. If you do run out of fuel, always the rule of thumb with gasoline, and I should have mentioned this in my last video as well, is with a jet ski like this, you wanna always have a third of your tank in reserve capacity. You really don't wanna ride until your fuel light comes on um that's just you know a practice with all vessels a third out a third back and a third in reserve so you should do the math appropriately and figure out where you're traveling check your charts check google earth see if there's fuel stations along the way and even go as far as calling those gas stations to confirm that they will be open planning especially with a jet ski is paramount you're out in the elements uh you know and you only have a limited amount of supplies you can carry just roughly looking at this setup here, the rack was about 400. These were about 100 each, so that's 600. Then you have this cooler. This cooler was about 300, I think. So basically, a setup that looks very similar to this. This is an Engel cooler. They're based here in Jupiter, Florida. It's very similar to a Yeti or an Orca cooler. In fact, um, you can buy a Kawasaki branded cooler that fits on the back of the ski here. I personally didn't want to shell out the $400 they were asking for it. So I went with Ingle, who's local here in Jupiter. So you're looking at, with the extra hardware you'll need, tax and shipping, you're looking at under $1,000 for this whole setup you see here. These Rotopacks are made in the United States, so they do tend to be a little more expensive. You can get knockoff competitors for about a third of the price on eBay or Amazon, but I decided to go with the genuine Rotopax products. And if you enjoyed this video, remember to hit that like button and subscribe for more Kawasaki content only on JD's Waterworld.